Okay, we have our Expo app up and running, the very bare bone basic. Uh, this is our only app component. Um, and to show you the similarities between Web, React, and then React Native and Expo in iOS and Android, we're going to add the same functionality we had in the web application where we could add and uh, subtract from our state of how many apps we're going to build. So first, we're going to change our actual text. And you can see that the app itself, I don't want to show this damn screen every single time. Got it. OK. Um, so now we have the same text. How many apps are we going to build? So it's pretty cool that it updates right away. Uh, if you were to do uh, native Objective-C or Swift or Java, you would have to rerun the whole application to see that change. And instead, we just do save and our expo. This happens in both React Native and Expo. Uh, hot reloading, it happened right away. The difference with Expo is that if we have the app, we could debug in both the simulator in the computer and the Expo app on our phone as well, which is pretty cool. Um, so now we're going to add our state, just like we did before. And that's just an object of count. And we're going to do 10. And that works fine. And then we're going to import this.state.count. And now we have our count of 10. So, so far it's exactly the same. Now this is where it differs a little bit. We're going to use our button again, but instead of a lowercase b, we're going to do uppercase. And this requires a title of add. And now it's going to break because button is not defined. So now we have to import it from React Native. And there's our button right there. It's just add. So the only difference is this one requires a title. Um, and you could just close it in here. You could also do like add and then close it. But this is just more streamlined. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is on press. So in the web app, it was on click. All the click functionality is on press. So if you're not actually in a web application, you're clicking it with the mouse in the iPhone or iOS application and Android application, you're pressing it. So it makes more sense. So that's what I mean by clear. Uh, it's clearly doing what it's actually doing in the app. So it's on pressing. It's not clicking anything. So uh, React Native, you kind of want to follow the same um, methodology that React Native has in their naming, uh, in your naming as well. So when a user presses this, we're going to do this dot add. And remember, we're going to use the same ES7 with the arrow function. But this is going to fail because we don't have our add function. So now we're going to add that. So now when we click add, we can see it in our console. And just like we could see it in our web app, we could see it in our iOS app as well. So that's pretty cool with the console. You could, you could use it the same way you would as a web application. So that's adding. So now we want to actually do the same thing of this that set state count equals num. So we can define num let num equal this dot state dot count plus one. And then when we do that and save it, we can increment our number by one. And we're gonna do the same thing for subtract or minus or whatever you want to call it. And then copy our button.
So now we can add and subtract. So the same exact functionality that we have in our web application is basically the same exact thing. The functions are the same, the state's the same. The only thing that's different is the actual components themselves, the view components. So we have button with a little a couple of different attributes. We need title. Um, so like say if we remove this title, you're going to get an error message because the title prop is required. So just like we created our header uh, component in the web application, that's the same thing. Uh, this is how that button component here is made. It's just a custom React Native component and it requires a prop of title. So in our header component, uh, we required a component called test uh, and then we renamed it to count. So you can name it whatever you want, but here this is specific, this needs title um, or else it'll fail and get this red screen of death. So it's pretty obvious that it's not working. Um, it won't fail quietly, which is a nice thing that you don't have in a web application. Um, and so there we go. Uh, super basic functionality, but if we really wanted to, we could have an iPhone app that uh, just adds and subtracts the number of how many apps we're going to build. Uh, and so this is our start to our application. In our next couple of videos, we're going to structure our files so that uh, it's more clear on where everything is held at, um, and then just start building out our Instagram application bit by bit. I uh, hope you join me for the ride and see you in the next video. Peace.